sofa6.co.uk. Sponsors of The Haze Hour. Well, hello, good evening, and welcome to Thursday. Because it's Thursday, isn't it, Chris? It's Thursday? Yes. Mm -hmm. I had thought it was that camera. That, that camera, not that camera. I was talking to that camera, I should be talking to that camera. Um, yes, for some reason, I woke up this morning and thought it was Friday, which is very strange considering it's a Thursday. But you know how these things go. And realised, after I'd woken up and realised that it was Thursday, that there was all kinds of things I hadn't done. Like, tell everybody last night, for instance, that the red chair, the big red chair, is empty. There's no Keith. That means everything's safe. And tonight I've got out new. <laughs> <laughs> it's all safe and there's no new. What can you say? Anyway, yes, it's Thursday night, so it's 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 Chris and me. Hello everyone. Chris Cap. Say hello to everybody, Chris. Hello. I'm here. What you got in your hand? What have I got in my hand? I've gone back to the, the Aspire. Uh-huh. I've gone back to the Aspire, Dave. Using the same principle that I did with the first Aspire. Um, that it would be better if you leave it a while. Yes. And it, it is. It is. It's doing quite canny here because I, I've had a little problem. The cat <laughs> broke. Oh. The cat broke me what's it. The cat broke you what's it? I'm sad about that. Um, but I thought you were referring to the other problem that we were talking about before the show as a result of the haggis. Oh. <laughs> Trying to forget me indigestion. Haggis for tea. Love it. Love it to bits. But oh, dear God, it kills me. Never but good, have is you it? See what I've been using, Dave, this week. Show me. Can oh. You see that? Oh. Oh. That's the Mark Bug. Um, Mark T. Bug. The yeah. Mark T. Bug. Yes, the one you need to bread poultice on the back of your neck to draw. That's right. We'll talk oh. about that. We, we, yes, we're we're will. we will. We're going to talk about that, but we'll do it after the titles. Otherwise, I'll forget to play the buggers in. Shall I play the titles? Bang out heads because I can put it on full blast because Kate's not here. Go on then, because I enjoy that. He doesn't like it. We'll be back right after the titles. Hello, good evening, and welcome to the Here's Hour. The Here's Hour. Yes, indeedly, indeedly, doodly, it is the Here's Hour as ever was with myself, Dave Dawn, and my partner in crime in the corner, the lady that keeps me right and does mine, I'm telling you. Oh, seriously, the whip. The scars across my back are shocking. Uh, we've got Kat in the corner. Um, so, yes, come on, tell me more about the Mark T bug, Mrs. What you've been doing with it? Well, you inspired me with your, your coils. Oh, dear. And I thought, everybody that's using <laughs> these, and I kind of, hang on, tri-cro. Coil. Got it out. Tri-cro coil. Now, I made a few of them, and I found them relatively easy to make. Right. right? Using the crucifix method. Yes. Right? But I couldn't see the hole. To get the cotton wool through on the little tiny ones. How tiny were you making the little tiny ones? Oh, they were fairly tiny. They were going around one of them little mini screwdriver things, and oh. I mean, they are minis. Uh huh. But at the time, I didn't have any cotton wool. No cutting wool? I didn't have cutting wool, no. No cutting I, wool. I'll show you what I was using. 
I was using this. And this is unbleached cotton. Where's that come from? Where everything comes from, eBay. I'm, I'm actually, I'm pleased you said what it was, because when first you held it up, I thought it was something that only ladies are supposed to know about. <laughs> no, it's um, piping. Oh, cotton. right. So you use it if you're doing a pole street and you sew around this bit, right? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. So as a result, they don't bother bleaching it, etc. So it's, it's pretty good. But as you can see, it kind of opens up a little bit too much. Yes. And when you're trying to get that through a coil, it's incredibly difficult. Indeed. Sorry, I'm getting. I'm just getting slightly distracted in chat because. What I, are they doing? Well, I perhaps should not have mentioned that you know ladies would have access to cutting well, and apparently they've picked that up. Disco Des Wilkinson is asking, how can a woman not have cotton wool? Um, and then Lena Marie Popper Torsten has come back and said, Des, we don't knit our own, you know. I, I, <laughs> I, th I think they're speaking about something which we gentlemen should leave to one side, in all honesty. Um, so, right, so you, you, you're you using the Mark T bug and you've tricro coiled it. I tried that. Uh -huh. Then I remember seeing you do just what I think you call a micro coil, which is just the larger of the three coils. The pseudo micro coil, yes. Right. Pseudo or sumo or whatever it's called. S pseudo because it's not a true micro coil. Because okay. a, tr a true micro coil is tidgy widgy tiny weeny. The size actually pretty much the size of the arms that you were doing on the tricro coil. Okay. Right? And it, it's tiddly widdly, so you, you're really like putting four strands of cutting wool through it. Um, right. it, but it, it, it might have 10 or 12 turns on it and it's wound on maybe a, a darning needle or something like that. Yeah. From what I understand. Right. So it would be tidgy widgy. So, a so my next stage go on then. was to go and buy the cutting wool. Oh, cutting wool. Which I remember you said you had to boil, so I boiled it. Uh -huh. But I didn't know whether you could wring it out or not. Uh Shall I let you into a secret? What? I don't bother boiling it. Now he tells us. Do you know it was three days on my radiator in a, a strainer? Well, I sat and looked at it and I thought, hang on, if I'm getting sterile cotton wool for medicinal purposes. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, I did it. Aye, anyway, there you go. Look. Three I'm days. Three days, yes. Do we make? No, I got I got sterile medicinal cotton wool so that there's no nasties in it to start with. Can it have? It's been passed by the MHRA, so it's bound to kill you. But it'll take 150 years. So that was what mm -hmm. I did. That was that I, I decided to go down that route. So I got little uh, little bits of cutting wool that are already sterile and have no bleach or anything like that in. Um, it's a little right. bit more expensive, but you use so little. I mean, you could actually use a cutting wool off a cotton bud for what I'm going to do later on. And as Disco Des has just pointed out, quite correctly, there's always sterile cotton wool in a first aid kit. That is a useful tip if you're ever short of wicked material. You know what I think, Chris? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I crit yes. my pants, which is a really wonderful name, says he thinks they sell unbleached at Holland and Barrett. <laughs> it's about all they can sell, since they got stuffed with the, uh, the uh, Herbal Products Directive, which rings a few bells. Yes, yeah, it's all good stuff, isn't it? Um, tell you what, I need to take six minutes of everybody's time. I'm putting off doing this tricro coil live. I'm, I'm sorry, but I am. Um, I'm putting off doing it because I'm scared to live in blue monkey nuts that I won't get it right. But I need to make a couple of announcements and I need to show you a video because we said in the trailer we would. Firstly, on Saturday, if you are in London and South East area, it's down south where they talk like that, there's going to be a mate on, in it? From half past four in the afternoon, I'm talking like this so Bob Oldkid can understand me and anybody south of Watford Gap basically. 
Art Mark 4 in the afternoon at Tattersall Castle. 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 It's pronounced like arsehole, isn't it? Yeah. At Tattersall Castle, uh, it's a boat moored on the Thames Embankment, it says here. I'm reading it. It says, so I'll do that in, in plain English, BBC English. On uh, on Saturday the 7th, the London South East Vape Meet will take place at the Tattersall Castle, moored on Thames Embankment, from half past four till 11 p.m. at night, 2300 hours. If you are available, go along. Um, you probably need to tweet Alan Hodgson for any further details if you can't find your own way there. Was that all right, Chris? Ah, sounds canny, son. Sounds canny. All right, pet. That's lovely. So if you're around, go along. I believe, I can't swear to it, but I think Rebecca Taylor said she was going to try and get there. You might want to meet her and shake her by the hand and give her a pint. <laughs> and if there's 40 odd people giving her a pint, she'll be legless. It'll be worth it. I googled that place, you know. Did you? You dirty beast. I did. It looks absolutely stunning. Does it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I wish I lived near her. I'd be going. Well, I must admit, if, if, if I had the wherewithal and the ability sort of do, I would be going there. But I, apparently I've been pre-booked for babysitting duties. But, I'm told, we'll be babysitting at my daughter's house and I know where my son-in-law keeps his stash of beers and he's just had a delivery of three cases it's gonna be a shame he'll be then left when he gets back <laughs> but that's me um that pardon never said no 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 I was I was just reading potted the brown and then screwed back for the pink no I just don't even want to know what they're talking about it's it's snooker it's, is that what that's it is Luca. Snow, uh, loopy, not far away. Um, yes, it's going to be one of those nights tonight, people. Um, but serious stuff uh, to get out of the way first. I did promise last night that I was going to show you the letter that Jane Ellison MP had written to Mr. William Cash MP, who is the chairman of the House of Commons European Scrutiny Committee. Therefore, I shall do exactly that. And here it is. And this is what it says Dear Bill, it's a bit uh, personal. Draft directive concerning the matter presentation, uh, manufacture, presentation and sale of tobacco and related products, blah, blah. Thank you for your letter of the 27th of November 2013. You will note this is dated the 2nd of December, by the way. Just thought I'd point that out. In your letter, you request more information on the debate in European Committee C, which was recommended by your committee on the 4th of September. Note that date. 4th of September, the committee recommended that there'd be a debate. I'm pleased to be able to tell you that we've now secured a date for this debate. It will take place on Monday 16th of December 2013 at 16.30. I am going to switch to camera on me and say that's too bloody late. That's the last day of trilogue. Bear that one in mind. I would also be delighted to meet with you as Chair of the European Scrutiny Committee to discuss any concerns you may have on the progress of the Tobacco Products Directive. Well, there you go. Concerns, this is when the final trialogue, scheduled trialogue meeting is supposed to have already happened. That's an interesting one. As I informed you in my letter of 31st of October, following the European Parliament vote on 8th of October, this woman's not very quick at uh, writing to people, is she, Chris? No. Trilogue negotiations are ongoing. As expected, these negotiations are focused on key areas of UK interest, such as how to ban characterising flavours, the regulation of e-cigarettes and cross-border sales of tobacco products. On nicotine-containing products, the government are listening carefully to the arguments that are being made by the European Parliament for the approach that they support for e-cigarettes to continue to be made available as general, make it bigger, dink, 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 consumer goods, it says at the top, with specific regulatory requirements in place and the position of other member states on the regulation of these products. Now that, in, in a way, is, is a little bit, you know, bolsters you up a touch. As you would expect, we are contributing to efforts that are being made by the Presidency to identify whether an acceptable compromise can be found on the regulation of e-cigarettes. I will stay in close touch with the Committee on Developments regarding the regulation of nicotine-containing products. Due to the sensitive nature of the negotiations, I am, I am, as yet, unable to provide the detail of possible compromises in this letter. 
I fully appreciate that your committee is entitled to regular updates, but, as I am sure you understand, our first priority must be to maintain UK efforts to best pursue our negotiating objectives. Now, where is it? There it is. That, that's pretty much all there is about ASIGs. What makes me giggle a little bit is everybody else in the country has seen what this is all about. And yet she's still maintaining that you can't tell Bill Cash in the scrutiny committee what the hell is going on. Something stinks. And I think it behoves us as vapors, as, as, as concerned constituents of every MP in the country, to um, let Bill Cash know what he's missing. To get onto our MPs and say, hang on, we know, why won't she tell him? Really. There is one last little bit I want to cover on this. Um, where is it? Press the right button, David. I can assure you that we are continuing to press hard to achieve the UK's priorities and that I will regularly update you on the final stages of the negotiation as soon as information is available. The next trialogue will be held on 3rd of December. That's the day after she wrote the letter, so kind of he's going to get it after it started. And I will write to you again shortly after this to inform you of any further provisional compromises reached. As per the Presidency's aim, trilogue negotiations will hopefully be concluded by the end of the year with a view to adopting the revised directive before the end of the current Parliament in May 2014. As such, I expect to be able to write to you informing you of the final outcome of the negotiations shortly after the Committee C debate on the 16th of December. If I, if I can translate from parliamentary speak into normal human being speak. She's just gone. Sodger. Gonna do what I like and I'm not gonna tell you until it's too late for you to do anything about it. That is basically what she said. Just thought I'd share. I'm wondering whether, have you been watching chat during that, Chris? Well, yeah, there's various bits and pieces going on in there. Is, uh, is there anything that we can say? <laughs> oh, I see. Yes, she, she should be... No, not really. There's, right. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I think it's, it's safe to say, people, if this concerns you, you know what to do. You know who to call. You know who to contact. You know how to do it. Far be it from me to suggest that you might like to ring your MP and make an appointment to go down. You could even take a copy of the letter you could print it off and put it in front of them and say, Oi, this isn't good enough. Take a couple of ACs with you. Let them know what's going on. That's the serious business. I don't think I've got any more serious business to cover, have I? There's no more serious stuff. Uh, no, not really. I mean, I think I, think I will read this out. It was from Phil. Um, who had a reply from John Redwood MP. Dear Mr. So-and-so, apologies for the errors in my previous email. I meant to say, Mr. Redwood wishes to see the final proposals that come forward before determining a view. However, given his opposition to excessive European legislation, I think it would be very unlikely for him to support the Commission's recommendations. It might be helpful to explain that the European Parliament recently rejected proposals to outlaw electronic cigarettes in their current form. Yes. Interesting. It's, uh, it's very interesting because it's beginning to look as though, I believe the term that gets used in, in posh circles is we're gaining traction. And we are. Mm -hmm. um, the voices are being heard and I think we need to raise them a little. And I'm pleased to see, I've just noticed, uh, it would appear that we have Polish viewers with us tonight. Patrick BZ, I don't quite know how to uh, pronounce that, but welcome. Welcome to everybody from all over Europe. It is so gratifying to see everybody coming together. The whole of Europe, vapours throughout Europe coming together as one, with one voice. Um, it's fabulous. And all... If we can get all 12 million voices raised in one big yell, we'll be heard worldwide. This is fabulous. Welcome to everyone, no matter what country you're in. This is where we all unite. It's amazing. Um, it's brilliant. 
absolutely brilliant. And yeah, we, people we, are reporting, seeing their MPs, etc. So that's all good. Indeed, yes. I've I've heard lots and lots of people. In fact, a, a new new to me Twitterer um, down in Thornaby has organised a meet with his MP, and he, there's a few of them going. It's going to be a group meet up, and that'll be good. And that's a marginal constituency as well. So mm -hmm. all power, all power. It's all brilliant. Um, and it is also worth mentioning, I think, as Whip It Up 69 has reminded me, there's a huge Twitter bomb planned for the 15th. That's the day before the final trilogue. A massive Twitter bomb. Not just pan-European, worldwide Twitter bomb going on. You can see over beside Chris there, that's chat scrolling up. Scrolling up and scrolling up. And, and, and yes, I'll say that. Remind them. Keep on reminding them, vapors are voters. And there's a tool coming very soon to help you decide how to vote if you didn't already know. Um, there's all kinds of stuff going on. It's fabulous, absolutely fabulous. Patrick's just said, during a listening um, of broadcast, I am translating the FBI, FBP webpage, and I'm doing my best to make Polish people fight for their rights. Well done, Patrick. Patrick, that is absolutely, it's double thumbs up from me. Oh, that's brilliant. And, and, and I can see he's getting lots of pats on the back uh, in chat as well. This is amazing. This is absolutely amazing. I'm, I'm starting to well up. We're going to the adverts. We'll be back in two minutes. Don't go anywhere, because after this, there's a little bit of video, and then David's going to try and do a trite rock coil without the aid of a safety net. I hope I pick the right number. Back in two. Super6.co.uk sponsors of the Haze Out. And we're back in the room and just as we went to the break I saw Matthias and I'm sorry Matthias I've got no chance of pronouncing your surname who is Finnish who is saying that the Finns have sent a bunch of flowers to Frederica Reyes. This is fabulous. This is absolutely amazing. Isn't it? How many countries have we got represented here tonight? If, if type in you, the country that you're from please type into chat the country from you that you're from because this is fabulous. I think it's brilliant. Uh, Norway, UK, obviously Germany, USA, more UK, Germany, UK, awesome, wherever that is, um, Germany, Canada, Ireland, Albert Village, that's Derby, that's another country, Denmark, 
Poland, Scotland. Very deadly land. <laughs> the afterlife. <laughs> <laughs> Wales. Um, I know there are, there are people in from uh, France. It, 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 this is fabulous. Thank you, everybody. I, I, I'm over the moon. I did a tool earlier on today. Um, I'd been, I've been asked, got asked to put this together because it would appear that there are far too many people in positions of power that haven't got a bloody clue what e-cigs are. And I thought to myself, right, I'm going to do this and I'm going to put together a little explanation that people can use with their MEPs, MPs, anybody that's interested really. It takes 5 minutes and 56 seconds. I'll play it in now. It's already available on YouTube. Here it comes. This is in essence a Generation 1 device. It consists of a battery unit, in this case very small, and what we call a cartomizer, in which there is a heating coil and a fluid reservoir. This particular one holds 0.7 of a milliliter of e-liquid. The good things and the bad things, very, very easy to put together. Very, very much like a cigarette in form factor, and the weight, in fact, is not a great deal more. That makes it appealing to those who are current smokers and who might be looking to switch. In terms of usability for someone who has already made the switch, these neither last long enough nor satisfy even with 45 milligram e-liquid in the cartomizer. So let's look at the pros and cons of one of these. This is a Generation 2 device. When you look at it alongside a Generation 1 device, you can see that its similarity to a cigarette is non-existent. This looks nothing like a tobacco cigarette. The constituent parts remain very similar. You have a battery unit here, and in the business end, if you like, there is a heating element, and there is a reservoir for the e-liquid, which is held behind this viewing window that we have. Where it differs is that this device is completely refillable. You can put in it any flavour of juice at any strength and it also has replaceable coils. It's much more cost effective for the user. It's also quite likely to be much more effective in terms of the experience that it gives the user. In other words, it will produce more vapour, more flavour and a, just a more enjoyable experience. Let's look at the pros and cons of Generation 2 devices. And now to Generation 3 devices. Generation 3 devices, as you can see, are markedly different from both Generation 1 and Generation 2. While Generation 2 takes the prospect of a battery and a heating element and a, and a reservoir to a stage further on and removes the cigarette looky lakey Generation 3 takes the battery and reservoir a stage further. In this case, the battery is power controlled. So you can vary the settings in terms of watts to give you more or less heat at the heating coil, which is in a much larger reservoir. Again, going from this end, the reservoir is completely refillable. The coil assembly that heats the juice is completely replaceable and can be customized to the user's own preferences. In the battery section, 
this section here, we can alter the amount of power available to the coil to completely customize the experience for every user to the nth degree. So no matter what your preferences are, this generation three device will give you the best possible experience for you because you can choose the flavor, the nicotine concentration, the amount of heat at the coil, and to a large degree, the shape and size of the unit. There are more and more third generation devices coming onto the market as days go by. They come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes and all sorts of different types to suit no matter what the user wants in terms of usability, looks, tactile feel and everything else. Let's look at the pros and cons of third generation devices. And there you go. Now, while that was playing, um, I did see somebody typing into chat, is it good to use the word cool when it comes to Generation 3 stuff? And I've done that for a particular reason. And that reason is, I want folks in European Parliament, in Council, anybody that's in power to understand that the cooler these things are, the better the chance there is of folks choosing to take them up. They may decide to try a looky likey as a gateway to second and third generation devices but quite honestly you know if you've got somebody that you know that is um, a smoker and they say something like that and they go oh my god that looks so cool what's it like can I have a go? You're kind of halfway there aren't you? And the whole thing about this and this is picking up on something else that I've, I've seen going on on Twitter and various other places where one or two smokers think we're getting at them. We're not. My aim, in truth, is for people to be able to choose to do what they want to do. That's the whole bit. It's so people have the choice. I'm against the choice being taken away from them. But my feeling is if you can get a better experience with something like that, then it's a no-brainer, isn't it? So yes, cool. Cool is good. And it gives a talking point to anybody that you've shown the video to, any MP or MEP. It makes them think. It makes them wonder. It makes them think, hell aye, there is something behind this. So there we go. Um, Chris, you had some bits and bobs you needed to cover, didn't you? I did, yes, Steve. Thank you for reminding me. Go for it. Um, yeah, it's a couple of aid meets that are going on to put in your diaries. Um, Disco Des, uh, vape meet at Shepton Mallet in Somerset on February the 16th. So get that one in your diary. Very boring. Glasgow meet on Saturday the 7th of December at the Rockers Bar, Glasgow. Kick off 2 p.m. See UK Vapors Regional Meet Thread for details and info. And Phil has posted about the Berkshire Vapors have just confirmed their second vape meet meet at 7 p.m. on Wednesday the 15th of January at the Prince of Wales pub in Caversham. That's in Reading. So there we go. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of things going on by oh, the sounds of things. There be even more that Sab's putting on my list here when I'm not looking. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> now I've got that. Uh, no, you're all right. I've already covered that one, so that's okay. Okie dokie. Good. Thank you for that, Chris. Um, meat's coming off left, right and centre. It's brilliant. And I did see somebody, Blaze, typed into chat, DD still putting off the tricoil. So I suppose I'd better do it, hadn't I? <laughs> <sighs> well, I really need to know. Right. You know, so 
Okie dokie, let's go to Closey Upy Cam. We're at Closey Upy Cam, but we're not very Closey Up, are we? So let's uh, zoom in. Because I want to see what you're using and the sizes. That's the important thing for me. Okay, well, let's. I've, I've actually started this one. And you can see that it is wound on a mini screwdriver. Okay. Now, what I had originally intended to do, if you, if you look at the, um, the squip here, it's got a well as well as the grooves. And I had originally intended to put the coil, the bigger coil, down into this well in here. And I tried it earlier on, as you do, because I actually felt the need to rehearse this. And if you drop the coil in there and put your cutting well around the coil, you end up with a perfect siphon and it just pulls the juice straight out. So if it goes down below those grooves, you're screwed. It siphons it. Okay? So I'm going to build the coil so that the, um, the actual coil stands proud like that. All right? So, where do we go with that then? Well, let's try and get this on camera, and this is not going to be easy. I have done five wraps of 0.25 canthal around this former. And now, having done that, we go into the crucifix method. And the crucifix method means that you place a hypodermic or a bod bodkin, is that the right word? I've got a one here. Right. There. You good, good, yes. That's exactly the, th the people can't say that. Hang on. There you go. That's a bodkin. And a bodkin's a darning needle, isn't it, effectively? A bluntish darning needle. That's right. Okie dokie. So, the gist is, what you do is you have your coil that you've snugged up really tight. And it's worthwhile heating your wire before you go any further. And then, you place your hypodermic needle, your bodkin, or whatever, alongside the coil. Now, this is where it gets a little bit tricky because you want to keep everything as tight and compact as you can. And I'm trying to do this very close up so everybody can see. The idea then is to take three or four wraps, very tight, around there. Am I doing this on camera? Probably not. All right, so you've got your three or four wraps there and they're going to go out to your contact and then you want to do the same on the other side. And this really is not easy to do. I'm going to zoom out a little bit, otherwise this is all going to look silly. Okay, so three wraps again around that side. One, two, Three. Right. Now, the idea is to get everything snugged up tight. And then you can either take it off the former and use tweezers, or you can do it on your former if you want. But you can now see, and I'll have to zoom into that so you can really see the look, the look of the whole thing. You've got two small coils and one large one. And if I just pull those slightly apart, you can see there how it works. And what I'm going to do now is torch them because I want those coils touching. So time While to While you're doing that, Dave, can I ask how many wraps you did initially around the screwdriver? Five. Five, thank you. Five wraps around the screwdriver. So what I'm going to do now is torch those tiny wraps. And there's the torch on. I want to separate the two coils off. And I want to torch them so, whoops, so they stay close together. Be careful you don't get your fingers in the flame. And just tweezering them. Holding them in the tweezers and just tweezing them tight. And hold them tight. Now the idea is once you've got that done, and they're actually quite close together, you can then 
using your original former for the micro side, you can start looking to put them on to your device of choice. And in this case, it's going to be the squip. And you've got to get it the right way around, obviously. And I want these coils as close to the center as I can get them, really. And then take my wrap around. Ow, that's bloody hot. Don't mock me. This is live. It's much easier when you've got your own time and you're not trying to run the schedules. Well, I'm trying to do the same thing in the background here. Is it easy enough? No. <laughs> If you keep that former in, it means that your, your coils are not going to go drifting about all over the place because that's exactly what you don't want. And you can keep that firmed down. And then you will need the former for your first coil just to position that in place, as you can see, like that, right in the middle. exactly in the center and now comes the tricky bit because you've got to get your cotton wick installed first off of course I need to cut those bits of wire off and I'm not clever enough to be able to do the the wiggly thing unfortunately so I'm just going to cut them off I hope everybody can see all right yes I can see good good I right. can see they can see so now what we've got is two three coil coils two three coil coils and the five coil coil on the top and what I'm going to do now is run the cutting well in and you're only going to use really very very tiny bits and they just need to go in roll them they don't even need to be tightly rolled but they do need to go through the two coils if you can manage it but because it's cotton wool, you can actually meet them up. I don't know whether you can see what's going on here. It's very, very difficult to do so that you can see. But all I'm doing is just making sure that that cotton wool is inside that coil. And then do the same on the other side into the coil. The two bits of cotton wool will meet, and that's fine too because they will feed the bottom part of the upper coil and all I'm doing is just feeding it in as you can see it's not very tight it's not massively tight at all just fed into the coil like that alrighty and I'll just make sure the other side is snugged up so I've now got what is in effect a complete piece of cotton wool going from side to side okay now I need one further piece of cotton wool and that's going to bridge over the top of that coil and you'll notice at this point in time I haven't checked any resistances or anything so here's my little piece of cotton wool I'm going to split it down the middle and just place it over the top pressing it down quite well and then merge it with the bits of cotton wool on the other two sides that's all it needs to do and at this point it's actually a little bit easier to put some juice on and you can see how quickly that soaks in so you've got the whole of the center of that micro coil is open to the air. This is a fabulous technique. Because it's, there we go. Now you can see how it all molds. Once you start getting a little bit of juice on, it all molds into place. You following it, Chris? No, I thought they used the wrong lucky screwdriver. Excuse me, I'm going to start swearing in a minute. I love it when, there, I, I love it when you start swearing. Right. All that remains now is just to trim that cotton wool off so it's not going to get in the way and make sure it's snugged into those little G 
you know I'm all fingers and thumbs. It must be like being on uh, pointless. You know all the answers when you're at home and you haven't got a clue when you're in the studio. It's exactly how I feel at the minute. I had thought of doing a here's one I made earlier, but that would be cheating, wouldn't it? Wish I had. And I did say I would do it without a safety net. All right, that's all snug down. Last little dribble of juice. And then onto a device. And the device it's going onto is my copper, which I'm using an awful lot. And of course, it's equipped with a DNA 20. All right. And what I need to do is just check where I'm at. And I'm going to turn it down a little bit to start with to 12 watts. I'll go to 11 watts actually. And let's see what happens when we spark it up. And there we go. Now that doesn't look like an awful lot, but you can see that there's bubbling going on and you can see there's no hot spots anywhere there. And as it gets up to heat, it really, really, really starts to go. Let me go to a slightly wider shot and then you can really see what's going on here. All right. Okay. Now at this point in time, I need to connect the whole lot up and put it back into the body of the scrape. And I'm going to just fill the scrape up a little before I do that. Adverts are going to be late. That's all right, isn't it, Chris? Yeah, that's fine. I'm busy. Are you? Mm -hmm. You're not buying a scrape, are you? No, I'm busy doing me coil. Oh, I'm sorry. Right. Let's uh, reassemble the scrape and then stick it on and see how it goes. It really doesn't need a lot. This stuff wicks like the very devil. Into the scrape it goes. Back on to my copper. And now I'll have a look and see I'm at exactly 2.8 ohms. Let's... Uh, go to camera 2 and put the drip tip back in. Hello everybody. It's just as well I wash my hands, isn't it? And let's see how this goes at 11 watts. I think you could say that's decent. I think you can say that's very decent indeed, in fact. <coughs> it's brilliant, in fact. Mm -hmm. I think we can safely say that's working. That's just at 11 watts. Um, I'm going to crank it up to where I've been using it for the last, I don't know how long. It's 14 watts is the, is the position of choice. Go back to camera two and give it a blast. Will that do, do you think, Chris? Looks to be pretty cunning, huh? We'll take the adverts. Back in two minutes. Don't go anywhere.
Safer Six. Sponsors of the Haze Hour. And we're back in the room. I'll switch to camera one. Um, I've, it, it doesn't work at all. I mean, this tricro coil malarkey is just, as you can see, it's a complete waste of space and time. <laughs> Honestly, really, why would you? Are you in there, dude? Mm-hmm. Kind of see you, like. <laughs> um, Olga did type into chat during the course of the adverts that a tricro coil on a scrape gives massive flavour, massive vapour, massive throat hit and he's not wrong if you're not used to it be careful um i've dropped this back down to around about 11 watts now because at 14 it's too much even for me with this 54 milligram caramel lychee in it how are you dealing with yours chris i'm I hearing all kinds of noises I, I haven't got enough light in here and i kind of hit this this is going to sound ridiculous. The bit I'm stumped with is not making the coil. I cannot hit the screw with the screwdriver to tighten the top off. <laughs> it's, it's murder. That's murder. So it's just, you need... But that's my eyesight and the fact that I haven't got a great deal of light shining on this side mm. of the desk. But I've made the coil. thing about it is as well, when you start talking about wick, it doesn't use an awful lot of it, um, and it does wick inordinately well. Um, you will find the level for yourself, and the, the good part about all of that, in my view, is that you can add to the, the, the wicking that you've put over, because it's going over the top of that, that central coil. Um, I think it's great. I've got uh, tricro coils in two of the devices I'm using and the pseudo micro in my Kphone Lite uh, all with cotton wicks and they're all wick and light goodens and they're all working exceptionally well and I'm really rather pleased it's very nice it's it's a good way to go and it's a skill let's face it that we might need in three years time if things don't go right because well there's ways and means of getting juice but we'll not Are there go some there. devices you can't use it in, Dave? Really? Are there? Do you know any? Well, the tricro coil, it, it's difficult to make it work in some devices where you physically haven't got the room. But on the majority of the, um, the drippers, you can do it in a dripper, no bother at all. I've got one, as it happens, um, in a dripper over here. Oh, I can't get it out. I've got one in a dripper and my god it blitzes it out but as you know I am too dripping uh, what Donald Duck is to Christmas really and um, I'm just gonna get stuffed every time I drip it's murder it's absolute murder um, well I haven't used a dripper since oh 2000 early 2010 um, and like you I've tried I bought a couple and it's been a disaster because there's been juice all over the place but with this, the cotton wool, you can overdo it, if you like, and you're not going to pay the price because yes. the cotton wool absorbs. Yes. And you could find that you don't need to drip again for one, maybe two hours. Yes. And that, that's what I found to be absolutely fabulous about this system. Yes. Well, there's, there's one or two people have, uh, have dropped questions into chat, which I'm, I'm happy to try and answer. And the first mm -hmm. one was, was shorts and conduction a problem? Right. I've used 025 mil canthal. You're actually better if you can get hold of 03 in this case, the thicker the better, because you're getting a lot of turns in there. Now, that, that coil's run out at, it's now settling down. The, the the longer you use it after you first made it the more it compacts together um, and settles itself down so this originally was 2.9 after four or five six decent torques it's now at 2.6 yeah i found that as well the the one i've just been trying to replace there on a dripper started off at something like 3.1 mm. And I didn't pay a lot of attention to it because it was giving me the throat hit and it was giving me the vapor I was looking for. Mm. But after a week, it was down to 1.9. Yes. The, the, and the only reason I'm changing it now is, you know, when you, 
the juice that's in there starts tasting a little bit stale. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason I'm changing it. Yes, well, I mean, I, uh, that the first of the trichro coils I took out in order to be able to do the one that we've done tonight. Um, and it, it served me very well. The pseudo micro coil that was done in Ireland is still on it and it's still running perfectly. Um, I haven't had to change the wick or anything. The flavour is flooding out and it's mm -hmm. gorgeous. I'm running this at 11 watts um, on, on the 134 and it's, it's doing the job really well. It, it's fiddly to get to. It, 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 I've got to be honest, it is fiddly to get to, but it's so worth it when you do. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, the, the way I've been doing it, because um, on, on the dripper here, I just had the one coil, not the two little ones, um, threaded the um, cotton wool through that, which was easy for me to do with my poor eyesight. Mm -hmm. But before I put the cotton wool through, I pulsed it and yes. then kept using the tweezers to push them, the coil together. Yeah, exactly. And it worked so well. So if I can do it, we all can do it. I think, yeah, you're absolutely right. It, it, it is fiddly, but once you get used to it, I suppose it's like everything else. Once you find a way of doing it that suits you and you're not trying to do it on camera live for God knows how many people to watch you go wrong, it, it take your time and it's it's not too hard to do and the closer you can get those coils together the better it works now i'm not professing to be an expert on this in any way shape or form that's the third fourth of those trike row coils i've made and it's not that hard it takes a little bit of time takes a little bit of patience takes a little bit of accuracy but once you've got that running my god it's worthwhile now i'm gonna say that this is the one I've just done is not wicking quite as well as I would like it. So all I'm going to do is lay another little bit of cotton wool across it and that will up the wickage and we'll end up running absolutely perfectly the way I want it. But I'll, I see where we are time wise and I'm going to have to do that off camera. But oh, uh, where's the time gone? I don't know, it's just flown by. It has absolutely flown. Ah, now somebody said next thing will probably be coil within a coil. I'm going to go full screen. That was my thought as well. And I'm going to have a look at doing that because I think I can separate two coils, one round, one wound inside the other. I think I can separate them out with a very, very thin layer of gauze and that will put enough there outside inside that would that would work perfectly so that's something i'm going to be looking at as well a uh, concentric dual coil that could be amazing mm -hmm. if you do have a go at that can i ask you all a favor would you film it and send me it because i'd love to see how other people are building these clever coils film it iphone will do and send me it and we'll edit them together. I, I, I would love to show how other people are building coils. It'd be absolutely fabulous. Be brilliant. Chris, we're nearly there, aren't we? Unfortunately, we are. We've only got about 30 seconds. Good Lord above. Well, we'll try and finish on time then, shall we? All right, go on then. Go on then. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's flat canthal to play with as well. There's all kinds of stuff to have a look at and I'm gonna keep on exploring all these options when I'm not kicking legislators backsides um so i i want to say thanks to chris for coming to join me and the uh, the backroom team that no doubt has been helping you out can i implore you all to go and listen to daz while his voice is still normal before we shove him on top of the christmas tree on ry4 radio there will be a link in chat of that i am absolutely certain uh, but from all of us here at vapor trails dot tv uh, don't forget to tune in on friday night for the lock-in sunday night for dave's tackle box monday night for tin your tip tuesday night for marco um, and the, the german da talk and i'll see you again next wednesday night for vt talk until then from all of us here it's been a great pleasure to spend the last hour with you don't forget vape on vape hard and nil carborundum illegitimate till next time from all of us Night night. Take care. Bye bye. Bye.
Sex, sponsors of the Haze Hour.